All right, this is the very last section of our prove it notes. So this is part eight. We're gonna be working on our sum to product and product to sum formulas. Now, if you were just to look at your textbook and uh, look at the formulas that they give you, you're gonna see eight different formulas because what they do is they break down the sum to product and the product to sum formulas. So I'm gonna write both of those things down here. Um, they break those up into four different formulas each, so you have a lot of memorization to do if you go based off of what the textbook tells you. Um, but what we're going to do is just derive four formulas that will allow you to do both, go from a sum to a product or from a product to a sum. Okay, so let's get started here. Now I'm going to give you a sneak peek of our sum to product and product to sum formulas. So here they are, here's the four that I was talking about, and like I said, your book will use eight different formulas. Now as you can see, we're relating two sums, so we have the sine of two uh, different sine functions here, or I'm sorry, the sum of two sine functions here, and we can change that into the product of a sine and cosine. So it is really helpful for us to be able to do this, not only when we start um, trying to simplify trig expressions, but when we get to solving trig equations, this is a really helpful technique, and you're gonna use it next year when you get to BC Calc um, in simplifying some expressions as well. Uh, it's a technique used in integrating or finding derivatives. Okay, so now that you know what our sum to product formulas actually look like, um, I hope that now it'll become a little bit more clear why we're going to derive it the way we do. Now, uh, if we just take a look at that first one that we looked at, the sum of two sine functions, um, I used notation A and B, and now I'm going to switch gears and go to X, Y, but we we're looking at the sine of X plus Y, uh, that added to the sine of X minus Y. What I want to first do is actually define the sine of X plus Y and the sine of X minus Y. Now I can define those because I've already proven using our addition formulas, right? I already know what the sine of x plus y is and what the sine of x minus y is. Here I, I'm going to get uh, the sine of x cosine of y plus the cosine of x times the sine of y. And for the sine of x minus y, I know that this is the sine of x times the cosine of y minus the cosine of x times the sine of y. Again, stuff that you've already proved, proven um, in your addition formulas. Now when we were looking at the sum of these two sine functions, we literally saw that we were adding the sine of x plus y with the sine of x minus y. Now if we go ahead and do this algebraically here, if I simply add these signs together here, I would have to add on the right hand side this equation here as well, and we'd end up with two sine x's cosine y's, right? Two of them. So I have two sine x cosine y, um, and here the cosine x and sine y here, that cancels each other out. So I am actually ending up with my 31st identity here because I just changed a sum of two sine functions into the product of a cosine and sine function. So that's your 31st identity, okay? Three more to go. All right, now, likewise, I can show uh, what the difference of these two sine functions are by just subtracting both of those lines. So if I subtract and find the difference here of the sine of x plus y minus the sine of x minus y, if I subtract these lines now, let's change those, now the sine of x cosine y will actually cancel each other out here, and I'm left with cosine x sine y minus a negative cosine x sine y, so now I have two positive cosine x sine y, so I have two cosine x sine y. All right, now this is our 32nd identity. Okay, if you go back to uh, that little sneak peek here, that was identity uh, number two here that's listed. Okay, we've got two more to go here. Uh, the sum of two cosine functions and the difference of two cosine functions. So let's go back here and try to prove that now. So very similar to what I just worked on with the sine uh, functions, I wanted to find the cosine of x plus y and the cosine of x minus y. Now I know that the cosine of x plus y is going to be the cosine of x times the cosine of y minus the sine of x times the sine of y. Again, that's just based off of our addition formulas. And the cosine of x minus y is going to be the cosine of x cosine of y plus the sine of x times the sine of y. Now if I want to literally add these two functions, so if I wanted to find the sum of the cosine of x plus y and cosine of x minus y, I would have the cosine of x plus y plus cosine of x minus y equaling, if I add these two lines together, I end up with two cosine x cosine y's. 
Here the sine x, sine y's will cancel because they're obviously uh, opposites of one another. Okay, and there we have now our 33rd identity. Okay, we're one step closer. Now, the same thing goes for this one. We're going to subtract the lines so that I can find the difference here and rewrite the difference of our two cosine functions as a product. And that product here, if I subtract now, these will cancel this time around. And I have negative sine x sine y minus another sine x sine y. So that gives me negative 2. Oops, let me switch colors to blue here. So negative 2 sine x uh, sine y. Okay, this is our 34th and final identity of our prove it notes. Okay, I'm sure you're super excited. Um, we're almost done. <laughs> I know that's our last identity, but we do need to add in an additional note now. Okay, so remember how I said we are only going to use four formulas so that we can clearly go from a sum to a product or from a product to a sum? Um, well, your book uses eight different formulas and we're only using four so we have to uh, be able to use these formulas and make sense of them and be able to apply them um, and to do that we're going to write a little condition here below so this is still part of our prove it notes and it's useful in trying to actually apply uh, the formulas that we just derived so we're going to make an, an additional note here now these formulas are all under the condition that x is greater than y okay so if x is greater than y then we have uh, some statements that we can make about the sum of x plus y and x minus y. Algebraically, we would know that this is just equal to 2x, right? x plus y plus x minus y. Algebraically, that equals 2x. And we also know that if we take the difference of x plus y and x minus y, well, that would end up giving me 2y, right? Algebraically here, if you just distributed that negative, you'd end up with 2y. Well, you might think, well, why is that useful at all? It's actually very useful when we try to go from a sum to a product, and our sum is given already with x and y and x minus y put together. So, for example, so I'm going to go through examples actually in our section too, but I just want to show you why we need this note. So this is the end, basically, of your prove it notes, okay? But I want to justify why we're making this little note here. So let's say I gave you something like the cosine of 3 theta plus the cosine of theta. And I asked you to change this into a product. So we're going to take a sum of two cosines, and we want to write that as the product of something. Well, we know from our formula here that it should follow this form, right? The cosine of x plus y plus the cosine of x minus y should equal 2 times the cosine of x times the cosine of y. The problem is, though, I don't know what x and y are. All I know is that x plus y so x plus y here is equal to 3 theta, and I know that x minus y is equal to theta. So in this case, what I actually have to do is kind of use these two conditions here in order to solve for x and solve for y. So literally what this is saying here is that I can add the term x plus y. In this case, that's the 3 theta here. So I can add 3 theta plus x minus y, which in this case is theta, and that's going to equal 2x. So I can get my x value by adding these two together. So if I added together and solve for x, I'd end up with x equaling 2 theta. So that tells me now what I can plug in back into this formula right here as my x value. Okay. Now to get uh, the y value, I will work on the same thing here using the second condition below. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit messy here with this. Let me erase that. So I have x plus y, which I know is 3 theta. So 3 theta, this time we're going to subtract uh, the value of x minus y from that, which is just the theta here, and that's going to equal 2y. So I have 2 theta equals 2y. Solving for y, I end up with just theta. So y equals theta, and x is 2 theta. So here, when I want to change this into a product, based off of our formula that we just derived, we know that if we want to take the, whoops, we want to take the cosine sum of two cosine functions here, that's going to end up being 2 times cosine x times cosine y. So again, we just defined x and y. So now I know that the cosine of 3 theta plus the cosine of theta can be written as 2 times the cosine of x here, 2 theta, times the cosine of y, which is theta. So that's changing, let me erase one more time, sorry. That's changing this sum 
into now a product, okay? So again, useful to know this little note here, and it is mandatory that you include that in your proven notes. All right, that is the end. Yay. All right, we'll get some practice with this stuff and get ready for your prove it practice test and your prove it test. Nice job. See you guys tomorrow.